Okay, so standing one, okay, standing exercises. Yeah, so one, two, three, four, five, six. So we'll do the stand, standing ones. Yeah. Okay, something happened again. Wow. Okay, so, all right, so stand exercises. Now try and do bridge asan, standing, standing on your toes, going up as far up. One, two, three, four, five. Stretching yourself further. One, two, three, four, five. Change side with the opposite side. One, two, three, four, five, and then push. One, two, three, four, five. Your knee, hands on your knee, and push far as possible. One, two, three, four, five. Chin side, do the same. Push. One, two, three, four, Five hands on your knee, stretch as far as possible. One, two, three, four, five. Come back up and then try and twist your back bones. Twist a little bit slowly on your knees as well as knee. Twisting inside, out, inside. Out, inside, out, outside, in, outside, in, outside, in. Okay, so now try and bend your right knee, hands straight, both of them. Look on your right side, your right fingers. One, two, three, four, five. Now pull them up as far back. One, two, three, four, five, go to the opposite side, push, one, looking at the left finger, your knee left is bent a little bit, one, two, three, four, five, bring your hand up, one, two, three, four, five, good. Now we do three corner, three corner asana, so right hand to your right ankle, your left fingers are up, you look at your fingers up there. One, two, three, four, five. Now go down. One, two, three, four, five. Now try and go down as much as you can. Try to touch your knee. One, two, three, four, five. Bend your knee and go down on your knees, opposite knee, and lift yourself up. Go back. Chandra Asan, Chandra Namaskar, one, two, three, four, five. Come back, turn around, try and sit on your right leg, one, two, three, four, five. Come slowly up, up. Now do it three corner on the opposite side, one, two, three, four, Five hands there, one, two, three, four, five. Take your hands down to the knee, one, two, three, four, five. Bend your right knee, come down, lift yourself from the left, one, two, three, four, five. Hold, come back now this time. Sit on your left ankle. One, two, three, four, five. Come back slowly up and stretch further. Try and touch your left inside of your ankle. Right, left, opposite. Move, move, move. Go inside as far back. Come outside. Go up, in, outside, up, in. <laughs> Outside, up, okay, right there. So come up, up, 
So bridge asana, yeah? holding yourself on your toes, just on your toes, standing, focusing your mind, being in yourself, being in the moment now, holding yourself. Part of it is your muscles and joints, other thing is your mind focus, huh? holding it. Now, bring your left leg, hold on to your right, stand again. One, two, three, four, five. Come down, change side, right leg, holding it around me. If you can't, just keep it on the ankle. Don't worry, you don't have to bring all the way up. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, okay now we do so the baby pose. Go down, down, down. One, two, three, four, five. Come up, hold your ears and go, go three times. One, two, and three. Okay, so very good for your neuronal connections. And as you can see, it gives you flexibility, exercises. Okay, so all these are very important, yeah? You never get old in your mind, as you know, the old people there will know. It's only your body doesn't actually keep up with you. So yogic asanas are very helpful to keep you at your level of your mind because you're not really getting old. Your mind is still fresh. You can keep your brain functioning good. The, la the worst thing you can do is believe in something which is totally wrong, that you are old now. No, nobody's old. You just make yourself in that state. So keep believing that as your mind thinks, your body can respond to it. So I say every week, if you don't do any exercise, just do Surya Namaskar yeah, every day. Do it five or 10 times, whatever time you have. So Surya Namaskar, breathing in, breathe out, go back, breathe in, out, touch your toes, right leg back, straighten yourself, look up, both legs back, straighten yourself, come down, just touch the floor with your chin, Knee and toes, other parts are arm. Bring yourself up. One, look up, bring it. Go a mountain pose, parvatasana. You can touch the floor a good. If you can't, don't worry. Right leg up, bring it down. Breathe in, right left leg up, bring it down. Left leg inside, straighten yourself. Look up, both legs together. Touch your toes, go back and back. So that's a half cycle. Now we do towards from the left side. Breathe in, breathe out, breathe in and out. Just the toes. This time left leg goes back. Straighten yourself, both legs back. Hold yourself in a plank. Then go down, touch the floor with your chin, knee and toes only, hold it. Bring it up, Bhujangasana. Like that, looking up, both together, Parvatasana. And the left leg up this time, down, right leg up, down, right leg inside, look up, both legs together, go back, and to the normal place. Now we do it quickly. As, as I said, we do, because of limitation of time, we only do it three times, yeah? Each of the asanas. Now we do again, breathe in, breathe out, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Of this side, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Last one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Okay, so if you 
can't do any other assets that we did for more than half an hour, no? You can just do this, yeah? It will include most of the poses anyway. Now, we do, if we yoga nidra, that's I complete my set of exercises. Yeah? So this, this, Okay, and then I do sit down. Okay, all right, so we've done as much as we can in the limitation of time. The asans, yeah. Now we'll do, we'll do yog nidra. So let's get in the shavasana position, corpse. The corpse position is lying flat, like you are sleeping, or like a dead body, basically. Your hands are by your side, yeah? Little separated, your legs are little separated as well. Your eyes are closed. But your ears are very open. Focus. Completely focus what I talk about, yeah? Eyes are closed, but your third eye is open. So I'll take you for a ride through your body. If you understand your body, you'll find the source of the driver of this body. Then the second half of the Yomita will take you for the journey of the universe. If you know Brahman or the universe, then you'll get close to come Brahma. So Brahma, the creator, the universe, the general consciousness. So this is the pathway. This is the deep teaching of Hinduism that if you pray other things, is okay, it brings you towards this state of understanding, but more than that, you need to do self intuition, yogic things, bring your mandir or other things inside you, your how and corn and everything you can start seeing inside you. And the most sattvic pure state is when you actually join yourself with them the truth, the eternal consciousness, what is bound, there's no limitation to it. So I'll take you through the journey of, we did some of the exercises, the ritual part, now we are doing that journey part, and then hopefully by the end of journey, and after pranayama, you'll be able to actually start recognizing the truth, that the person you are, that you are not, you are not even this body, but you are part and part of the universe itself. Okay, so breathe in through your nose, deep breath. Be mindful, watch the breath as it goes down your throat into your lungs, some 800,000 alveolar spaces take up the oxygen, takes to the heart, and to the 50 trillion cells in your body. Watch it, because it's subconscious, you know, are aware of it. That space, Akash, the creation, has all that we need in material success plus metaphysical. But the way to connect is what is missing. The school systems, education systems, universities are helping us achieve things in a small, small manner. But you want to become beyond that and acquire that 99% space that is there outside as well in the body in terms of viscous organs, womb, and atoms and electrons are less than 1%. This space that is there, while it seems empty, it has got everything in it. So breathe again. This time take your breath to your belly button. 
And as you exhale, go down right up to your toes, come back up entire body up to your head and breathe out the carbon dioxide with other gases consciously, asking your body to remove all the toxins and negativities, the ill wills, the, all the bad things that we easily get attracted towards. Now breathe again. Watch the breath, which is about five liters of air that goes in our lungs. The air the, that is in the atmosphere is always moving, it's never static. So are we, from, even from conception, we are growing. It's expanding, everything moves. So being stuck into a situation in anything is very illogical and unnatural to the body. Because the entire air atmosphere that has, it also moves, it's not stated. So move with time, move all the time, be flexible like a coconut tree. Yeah? When the hurricane comes, you can see how it sways. But if you are stated, you'll break. Now breathe again. Take a deep breath and take to your tummy area. That's the third type of prana shakti called. So your pran, apan, and sama. It drives your energy center, the metabolism, why and how you can balance your fat in your body, digestive processes. It's directly related to the sun. It's agni, shakti. Rajasic nature brings success in your life, in your body. It's a digestive process, keeps you healthy, burns what is not required. Gives you the vision, rub, rang, roshni, shakti. Beyond the senses, then you have this conception of what's called divine light. Having the vision of the universe with this strength that you have inside, telescope is good makes it easy and we should use all these apparatus and yantras and things. They are helpful. But there is more to it. Now breathe again, the fourth one. The fourth prana shakti is udan, which is vayu, jala, apa. So 70% as you know, earth is formed from the ocean. Your body is floating in ocean, your brain, your heart, your lungs, everything. It gives you this shitalta cohesion. Try to learn to be still as much as you can. Don't be overreactive because your environment always will make you reactive to everything. If you want to be going with the flow all the time, you will be destroyed by whatever predominant flow is around you. And most of it negative, as you know. So the juices in the body, okay. Now next breath, keep one, deep one again. Follow the breath, take it towards your head on the tops, all the oxygen for your brain, 25% of energy is required by this brain itself. So you have good thought process. Vyan mm -hmm. is the fifth prana, which is the structure of this body, the 206 bones, the muscles, the tendons, at a physical level, school level. Then at sukshan level, there's all these nadis in your body. Those function along what's called vibrations, energy and frequency. So yogic exercises are actually taking you to that level of energy frequency vibrations. Because that's the deepest level at which this body runs and the universe runs on that as well. The vibration, the frequency that is there and that energy. The matter is actually manifested in a form of energy and vibrations. 
and our body also is there. Unless and until you concentrate and understand, then only you can tap into this source of energy that you have. And then there are five uprans called Nath, Kuruma, Karikal, Devdad, Dhananjay. And they function your peristalsis, birth process, uh, your hiccups, your eye movement, etc. Now breathe again. This time, the journey of your body, which again is parasympathetic, as you know, involuntary system runs 90% of the functional action is done by parasympathetic. So eating and drinking again, 90% of it is actually without really you doing anything. Your control is only the freedom that you get to use your hands and your mouth to chew. Beyond that, you don't have any control again. So as humans, you are given the brain to be mindful of what you are doing and what you are putting in your mouth because your stomach is not a refrigerator and you don't want to make it into a cemetery yeah, by putting things that are not supposed to be there. It's your choice what we put in your mouth. Whatever goes in, then it's like a machinery. It gets digested by acid, the, the loops of bowel, the twists and turns of the bar, eight meters, two meters of large bowel, with about two trillion bacteria. And half of these bacteria, we don't know what the DNA signifies and where do they come from. It's almost like the dark matter of the universe, you know, like what we don't know what is beyond that, the dark energy. So the body also has these trillions of bacterial colonies which needs to be maintained, otherwise lots of diseases happen. Your system is balanced by this microbiome. So now, and be mindful what you eat because it destroys. Wrong things put in will take out these colonies of bacteria from your body and you get all sorts of reactions and, and disease processes, including mental illness, depression, anxiety, and other things also are related now scientifically shown. Breathe in. Now take your attention to the excretory system of your body. Again, it's parasympathetic, it runs itself, your kidneys, your ureta, your bladder, urethra, your perspiration. When you exercise, there's this means of actually removing toxins of your body. Now bring your attention to your fingertips. Watch with your closed third eye, come to your wrist, come to your elbows, shoulder. Along your vertebra, go to your heels and your toes of your sole of your feet, come up to the knee, to the pelvic area. And focus around the spine because the energy centers run from the tailbone right up to the top of your head. On the left side is called Ida, on the right side is called Pingla, and they're associated with the moon and the sun respectively. Chandra Navi, Surya Navi. Chandra Navi gives you this expression of end organ hormones, chemical mediators, while the Surya Navi controls your circadian rhythm. The sun is rajasic, it gives the energy, your thalamus, which is the gatekeeper of your brain, to the hypothalamus, to the pituitary gland, all the hormones get secreted. Your connections, your pineal gland, the uh, endocrine, serotonin, dopamine, oxytocin, all these good feeling hormones, the pharmacy of your body is really in the body. If you keep covering it, camouflaging by other means, then you are not expressing these things that are natural to your body. So be mindful that you activate your thing in yoga, meditation, um, pranayama, other ways of doing it. Your thyroid, parathyroid, your thymus, your lymph nodes, your bada, maja, asti, your bone marrow, all these things, your renal glands needs to be balanced. So the parasympathetic system is your repair mechanism, your regeneration, your resting phase, your creativity occurs from this vasovagal nerve tone, which runs from the brain to your mouth, your heart resting, your lung your peristalsis, spleen, pancreas, go, all the juice secretions, expulsion of the dead, air in your lungs, all these functional things 
are balanced by these actions. What are we doing? Like asana, pranayama, and meditation. Other things you can do is by bushwalking, going into nature, so you know, sea itself, having cold bath. All these things are naturally stimulating your parasympathetic system. Now come bring your attention to the tailbone and follow down where we started our asanas from Muladhar, Swadhisthana, Manipur, Anahat, Hit Pradhan, Vishuddhi, Nasikagra, Trikuri, Arjuna, Sahasra, Brahmin, Brahmudra, right on the top of your head, where this body can actually start living by mimicking and absorbing directly sun energy to live. We all know as we grow older, we require so little food actually. The body's capability and capacity to regenerate is amazing. But as you advance yourself through these processes, you actually become even more efficient in utilizing the energy of the universe itself because each of our molecules and the body uh, elements that are there is actually from the universe itself. It's actually the connection the link that is missing, it starts missing after two years when you are as a baby grown, then it's all gone. So connection and that link is the power. So breathe in and breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out now. See yourself, separate yourself, the third, a phase or the component plane of your body from the body to the mind to the emotions is the atma or the soul component and you for that bring yourself actively out and watch with your third eye as your body is lying like a log go out further as in the sky and you can see whole of sydney or australia itself as a big island in the ocean go further up 200 kilometers you at the International Space Station now. Earth is spinning about 250 kilometers per second, and it's tilting about 28 kilometers per second as well. While we were on Earth, we had no idea. But when you're at the International Space Station, you can watch this huge ball. Similarly, your body is like that. When you are not aware of it, there's lots of things happening inside which we, we have no aware until you become conscious about it. So the, you know, your Musk and Jeff Bezos are doing a good favor. At least it's making us realize and understand the, how the earth itself, itself is functioning. How it's so, you know, it's alive in its own way. And go further up and you can see the positioning of the moon, where our moon is placed as the biggest satellite of this earth. And the reason why it's placed at the distance Triple parts, Christian parts. And that's why, you know, we do Ekadasi and other fastings. It's a positioning of moon. It has direct relationship to you as an individual on this earth. The sun, the Milky Way, Akash Ganga, the Nogra. And in that, the energy that is fusing and keeping all this running, time, space becomes one there. Time is, we call it like a, uh, you know, the Western way system makes it linear, but we know it's a circular thing. This time space is same thing. Time dilation. If you go into space, you don't get old because of the speed of the time is different. So wave, particles, that vibration energy was saying, the black hole, the sphere of the uh, uh, universe, creating gra the gravity itself. So it keeps going on, it keeps expanding. Now with the help of Hubble telescope, we know there's not universe, but multiverses. There's Andromeda, there's Metromeda, there's all these clusters of universes beyond. And we keep learning about it. And surprise, surprise, it's all, all in our actually uh, Vedas. All this information that I'm sharing is from the Vedas. They already talk about the Sadhya Sukta and other Rig Ved verses teach, tell you about this creation and gives you 
the date and time of how and the distance between sun, moon, earth, the time of each of the phases of the universe or the um, Satyug, Treta, Dwapar, Kayug, how many hundred of these, one Chaturyug, one Brahman, day, about 554 million, uh, sorry, trillion years, something like that. So the journey of the Brahma is the way you find that eternal energy source. You can name anywhere, but it can't be one person. That's what our teachings are, the supreme teaching. And bring it back slowly, come back to the International Space Station, to Sydney, come back to your body, bring the energy because you are what is the universe you are, but that expression of it. Help yourself by being in connection and you'll always be happy at peace and you'll have all good qualities in you. And that's, that's what we need to breathe in and come up. Breathe in. So that's called your nidra. Okay, so in Shavasana, we went through the journey of your body and understanding your body gives you direction to your life to be healthy. And then the next part is the journey of the universe itself. Now breathe in, we do some, how do you stimulate your vasovagal system that I was talking about is by doing pranayam, yeah? So pranayam are very focused, mm -hmm. uh, breathing exercises, which, which help you to stimulate your internal system and balances your hormones, chemical media. Mm -hmm. Yes, so breathe in, do bhastika. So let's do bhastika. So bhastika is breathing through your nose, breathing out through your nose, deep breath, okay, completely in. Completely out exhalation, yeah? So keep doing, we'll do it for three times. And if you have, uh, sorry, if you get cut out and they just join in, yeah? I don't know what happens. I have no idea. But if you get cut out, then we'll join again, yeah? I'll just be there, but you have to join in. So breathe in. So we did asanas, yeah? Exercises seem to be tough, but this is even more tough. Breathing exercises are even more tough because it's so targeted to each of your muscles around your chest, your tummy, your back, your front, and it becomes sore. But keep, keep trying it because you learn it. Once it becomes rhythmic and muscles are more uh, in control, then you don't have a problem. So bhastika pranayam, yeah? One more time. Now this is what called uh, uh, Sudarshan Kriya. It's the same thing. It helps you just breathe in. Maybe when you can't sit, then just do this. You do the same thing. Breathing in and you're pushing your belly button in as you're breathing out. As I say every day, no racing, do it at your own pace. If you have high blood pressure and things, you have heart disease, so do it slowly. Don't do too fast. Don't increase your heart rate too much, yeah? So, uh, so one more time. If you can cut off anyone, just join again, yeah? Because I noticed it gets cut out. So we'll do it again. Now we'll do Agnisar. So Agnisar is you breathe in, 
or breath out. Keep your neck a little bit tilted upwards and then move your belly button in and out. Holding the breath, the kumbak, in a kumbak position, like holding your breath, then move your belly button in and out. Yeah, like this. So breathe in, out. So maybe in the beginning, you could do it only five times. Keep trying, it will increase the breath. The amount of breath you can stop will increase with that, your muscle power will increase as well. So breathe again, breathe out. Breathe in and out, breathe in and out. One more time, third time. In and out, exhale or hold. So that's Agni Sarya. Breathing in and out, relax. As we keep doing it, you'll yourself feel it. Within this time period that we do this, you'll know how better you start feeling. It's all your thing, your pharmacy is stimulating inside, okay? Now we do what's called Ujjayi Pranayam. So Ujjayi is for your throat, your heart, your immune system, your thyroid and parathyroid. So the direct feeling of vibrational energy is you can feel by Ujjayi. All others do it in a more subtle manner, in more internal organs, but this one is so superficial that you'll feel the vibration. So. <laughs> so what I'm doing is I'm breathing to the throat, still using the nose, but using the throat so you feel the vibrations of the chest. <laughs> Now bring your chin onto the chest and again further breathe through your throat area, even pressing more, creating more vibration. Bring your neck up, close your right nostril, breathe out to the left. One more time. <laughs> now we'll do what's called Abhantra Vritti, meaning take deep breath in and hold, hold, hold as much as you can. Then do Vahi Vritti, which means take out your breath as much, as much, as much as you can. Then Vahi Kumbak, hold it there. Hold it as long as you can and close all your orifices, Mulban, Jalandanban, and Udanban by this way, chin on your chest and close it. Yeah, all orifices are closed and you hold the breath as long as you can. Okay, that is the only moment you will your mind is completely in you, with you. It's not anywhere. You have a feel of that.
I'll be here, okay? If you get cut out, just join again, huh? I think it gets cut cut out for people. One, so I'll, I'll still be there. Eh? I'll keep doing it. If you get cut out, just try and join it. So that was Vahi Kumbak. One more time. So breathe deeply in, all out, Mul Ban, Jalandan Ban, Audan Ban. Yes, all the orifices are closed. And for that moment, you actually. <laughs> Now we do Kapal Bhati. Kapal Bhati is an exhalation exercise where we press our belly button in, we take our breath out. The, there's a vacuum created which you are sucking air in anyway, but you're not actively breathing in, but only actively breathing out. So Kapal being your own hand, you're trying to metaphorically open it, yeah, as I say every week, purpose of your life being to move your chakras or energy centers to a level where you are directly linked to the universal energy itself, the internal consciousness. That's what the human purpose is, yeah? The deep meaning of human life. Who am I? What am I doing? What is this creation? What is all this? Those big questions. So let's do it. And it, it is very helpful in that manner of that journey that I was taking through your nidra of your body, then to the universe. Uh, these breathing exercises are the means to actually become more intuitive, become to look inside and find that energy. So let's keep going with Kapalbhati. Do it in your way. Don't rush. Don't do anything as long as you keep doing. 